Okay. <clears throat> Good morning. I'm uh, Peggy Sattler, MPP for London West and NDP critic for women's issues. I'm uh, pleased to have the opportunity this morning to talk about my new private member's bill, the Safe Night Out Act, which I will be introducing this afternoon. And I want to uh, welcome three guests who have joined me this morning to provide their perspective on, uh, on my bill. Uh, Toronto City Council, our councillor, uh, Kristen Wong-Tam, uh, Nick Kennedy, who is a, a, a bar owner here in Toronto, he owns Civil Liberties, and Andrew uh, Clubine, who is president of the Ontario University Students Association, or USA. I also want to welcome a Violence Against Women advocate, Victoria Bell, who is here today uh, from the Dandelion Project, which you will be hearing uh, a little bit about from Nick Kennedy, and uh, Victoria will be available to, uh, to uh, take any questions uh, following our remarks. There's also uh, a number of other representatives from USA who have joined us this morning, so welcome very uh, welcome uh, to, to this morning's event. So the purpose of my private member's bill is to make sexual violence and harassment training mandatory for all persons who work in establishments that serve alcohol by including this training in the Smart Serve certification program. This was a recommendation that had been made by the Select Committee on Sexual Violence and harassment in its final report that was released in December 2015 and is strongly supported by students as well as bar owners like, uh, like Nick. The City of Toronto recently endorsed a motion from Councillor Wong Tam urging the government to move forward uh, with exactly legislation like this and you'll be hearing from each of uh, the panelists in a moment. Um, I have uh, brought with me this morning copies of a short research brief on uh, what is known as drug facilitated sexual assault which is when alcohol uh, most commonly or other drugs are used to intentionally incapacitate a person in order to perpetrate non-consensual sexual assault. In Ontario statistics show that one in five sexual sexual assault victims who reported to a sexual assault treatment centre had experienced drug facilitated sexual assault. Of these, almost all were women with the majority between the ages of 16 and 24. About one third were students. In half of these cases, the victim was assaulted by a friend or an acquaintance and most often the assault occurred what, while the victim was socialising at a club, a bar, a lounge, a restaurant, uh, a party or another a so kind of social event. The majority of these victims believed that they had been drugged through a drink. No one is actually sure how many sexual assault cases involve alcohol or drugs because more than 90% of sexual assaults are never reported. Some experts estimate that alcohol is a factor in as many as half or even more of all sexual assaults. For sexual assaults that are reported to the police, what we know from the police and the courts is that there has been an ongoing struggle with the issue of intoxication and consent. We've seen too many sexual assault cases that are deemed as unfounded by the police. Uh, we've seen too many judges who rule that sexual assault did not occur uh, because they believed that the inco intoxicated victim uh, was unable to, uh, or that lack of consent from the intoxicated victim could not be proven. Uh, last September, the Liberal government announced a $300,000 grant for the Ontario Restaurant, Hotel and Motel Association to develop training on sexual violence and har harassment intervention for servers, bartenders and managers, which would be available on a voluntary basis uh, to all those who work in the, in the sector. Uh, we believe that this initiative falls far short of what is necessary to ensure that all Ontarians and young Ontario women in particular can enjoy a safe night out. Ontario already requires that all those who work where liquor is sold uh, must participate in smart serve training. Uh, my bill would add sexual violence and harassment training to that certification program so that it would become mandatory for all servers, bartenders and managers. And I'm now going to ask uh, Kristen uh, Wong Tam to provide some comments. Thank you very much and uh, thank you for the invitation uh, MPP Statler for um, 
for the participation in this panel. This is a, a rather important issue that we require provincial leadership on. Uh, last uh, year, my colleague uh, Joe Cressy, Councillor Cressy, and I uh, tabled a motion at Toronto City Council specifically asking the province of Ontario uh, to ensure that the Smart Serve program was going to have expanded and enhanced uh, training uh, for all servers uh, to make sure that they are prepared to deal with, uh, to identify and then to adequately uh, hopefully stop uh, any incidents of sexual assault uh, and harassment that was being facilitated with uh, the use of alcohol. Uh, and, uh, and of course we want to make sure that all uh, patrons uh, to our restaurants, our bars, uh, and uh, and any other facilities that serve alcohol are going to make sure that they have a good time and they're safe. Uh, and so there is a duty of care and a duty of responsibility that comes with uh, alcohol service. Um, so I'm very pleased to see that um, uh, MPP Statler has actually stepped up uh, to uh, to respond to the City of Toronto's uh, call uh, for this action. It should be noted that City of Toronto uh, has a large number of these facilities that we all patronize them. They're part of our culture. We all go out to eat. We all go out to uh, to dine and and uh, and to uh, to enjoy our time with family and friends. And we all expect to go home uh, safely. Uh, but we know that that is not always the case. So the fact that 50 percent, uh, as noted already, of 50 percent of uh, of sexual assault and harassment uh, is oftentimes facilitated with the drug use of uh, of alcohol. Uh, that is a very alarming number. It seems to be just about everywhere. Uh, we recognize that the, uh, the, uh, the hospitality industry is a vital part of the Toronto's economy uh, and we want to make sure that everyone has the information that they need uh, when they go out uh, to, uh, to these this establishments. So this is part of our culture. This is something that we do and if we are actually not safe when we go out then we need to make sure that we are. And this to me is a very simple, uh, very uh, easy to implement gesture uh, from the provincial government who's already done uh, such a, a, a lot of work on the issue with respect to their report. It's never okay, an action plan to stop sexual violence and harassment. It was a very important and historic first step in addressing these matters in Ontario and they should be uh, given lots of credit uh, for taking that active leadership role on this. Uh, but they need to go a little bit further and that's what the Smart Surf Enhancement Program uh, request is about. Um, we all have a role to play, every single one of us, uh, including those of us who are going out uh, as in terms of bystanders. We have an opportunity to intervene when we see something go go wrong. Uh, it's some, it could be something as simple as uh, the server asking uh, and the the, uh, the door staff asking if someone is okay before they leave the establishment. Uh, this is something that's been identified as the by the World Health Organization as as a, as a particular tool uh, and training uh, facility that can uh, uh, help reduce sexual violence and assaults, especially in places where they serve alcohol. And I'm very pleased to say that my motion, uh, when passed on, on the floor of City Council by a supermajority, was also broadly supported by the Ontario Coalition of Rape Crisis Centers, the Canadian Federation of Students, and numerous uh, university campus groups across uh, not just Ontario but literally across Canada. And and, uh, and that was very easy to, to see and, uh, and very happy to see that support. So people are asking for this uh, and particular young folks are asking for this and uh, we have a responsibility to respond. Thank you very much. Thank you, Kristen. Uh, I'm now going to ask Nick Kennedy to give his perspective as a bar owner on the importance of this legislation. As a bar owner, this is a very simple piece of legislation. Uh, there's no additional uh, required training for current establishments, so it's the process of already getting a new license. Um, these resources are required uh, to fulfill our moral and professional obligation to ensure that our guests are safe. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. And finally, uh, I will ask Andrew uh, Klebein, President of uh, USA, to talk about the work that students have been doing to uh, move this legislation forward. Great. Thank you, Peggy. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Andrew Klubein. I'm the president of the Ontario Undergraduate Student Alliance, also known as USA. Uh, we represent the interests of approximately 150,000 professional and undergraduate part-time and full-time students at eight um, member institutions across Ontario. So USA is really pleased to see MPP Sattler uh, take leadership on the topic of sexual violence. If her Safe Night Out Act is passed, it would ensure that every manager or person involved uh, in the sale or service of liquor holds a certificate demonstrating the completion of a server training course which would include uh, sexual violence and harassment prevention training. 
University students are at a particularly high risk of experiencing sexual violence, so student associations play an important role in prevention efforts. Actually, since the mid-1980s, student associations across Canada have been advocating for effective prevention me mechanisms, and we continue to do so today. Our organizations provide programming to combat sexual and gendered violence, and are consistently working to create a culture of consent on campus. They also provide health and wellness programming, peer-to-peer -peer support, and survivor services. Last fall, USA's General Assembly approved a paper on sexual violence prevention and response. Our paper calls for nearly the same legislation that is before us today, that the provincial government expand SmartServe certification to include bar-specific sexual violence prevention training. Research shows that businesses which serve alcohol are extremely high-risk locations uh, for sexual violence and harassment, and the issue is especially prevalent on university campuses across Ontario. Campus pubs and bars are primarily frequented by students and are considered a safe space for them to enjoy a night out after classes. These establishments are often staffed by fellow students who often lack appropriate training to identify instances of sexual violence or to intervene. Many of our student associations, who in some instances actually own and operate these establishments, have taken leadership on their campuses and have already implemented this sort of training. But by mandating training in all establishments, the province would help ensure that bar staff across Ontario are equipped to identify and prevent instances of sexual violence, ensuring that all patrons, including students, feel safe in licensed establishments both on and off campus. Sexual violence prevention has been a very high priority for USA over the last year. It's only through collaboration between the province and the community at large that we can hope to bring an end to sexual violence in Ontario. Um, so we're looking forward to seeing MPP Sattler bring this conversation to the legislature, and we look forward to working with you um, to make sure that everyone feels safe on their night out. Thank you very much. Okay, any questions? <laughs> what, uh, in, in real terms, what does it look like to have a staff uh, trained to... Uh, to, to, to see this and to, and to intervene, uh, I mean, it, it, what uh, what do you train them to do? Nick, do you want to? Uh, my staff are, I'd say, proudly incredibly well trained at this. You train them to be aware of people's comfort levers, levels. You're not just serving people liquor, you're giving them a safe time. The way you do that is exactly asking people if they are okay. Um, Victoria Bell and the Dating Land Project have great training initiatives we've done to train our staff on things like when one person goes to the bathroom, check on the other person. Make sure they're feeling comfortable in a space that's private, that way you're not necessarily disturbing their night, but you're offering them uh, a real sense of security. Um, what's the, um, what, what's the, 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 the line between, uh, or is there a line between uh, uh, the, the desire to intervene, the desire to make sure that women are secure, and uh, the, the line that I think any business has to, to respect with in, in terms of you know, uh, the, the, the comfort and, and, and uh, uh, yeah, the comfort of, of your customers. Is, is, is there any barrier there? It's been my experience or the experience of me and my peers as other bar owners that that line is people's safety. Uh, right. People's safety is that line. So what I mean to say is um, I much prefer to have a foul up and have someone feel a little bit offended or me have to apologize to them for maybe disturbing their night rather than stay up at night wondering if I, or have any of my staff stay up at night wondering if, in fact, we should have intervened, so that's our policy. Um, uh, Peggy, uh, when is your next opportunity to bring this to, to debate? Are you, are you, you're not t debating today, are you? No, I'm introducing today, and uh, there will be another draw in the fall with uh, private members' bills uh, dates for each MPP, so I don't know at this point uh, when I would have an opportunity to bring it forward for second reading. I, I would like to just add that I think it's important to note that uh, in the city of Toronto, just by, by sheer volume of how many businesses we have that actually serve alcohol, uh, our, our average and, and rates of, uh, of uh, reported incidents of sexual harassment and assault are higher than anyone else in Ontario, the higher than anyone else in Canada. So this is actually very critical to, uh, to Toronto culture. I mean, right now we're just about to, uh, you know, we're heading into festival summer season. We're going to have a lot of people out in the streets, a lot of people in those in those venues and I think this is a, 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 an absolute uh, essential 
a, a training tool that has to that has to be implemented. Not to mention the fact that any implementation uh, and development of the training for the enhanced smart serve program must involve credited uh, and uh, and and uh, an experienced. Uh, Violence against women organizations, and it, is, it should also be noted that um, uh, the government should not develop this training in a vacuum. They have to they have to actually involve those who've actually uh, have lived experience, those who have practical experience of of dealing with sexual assault on a day to day uh, basis, in order for them to develop the very best training. And that training should not be static. It should be reviewed and then uh, and monitored to see uh, how it will be uh, uh, properly impacted and how it's going to be executed. And then they can always enhance it. The other, uh, the other advantage of including the training in SmartServe certification is that uh, that certification is required for anyone who works, uh, you know, even on a one-time basis at a at a banquet or you know a, a wedding, for example. Um, so it would uh, it would enable that training to be available more broadly, uh, rather than just uh, staff who work in uh, in bars or uh, or restaurants. Thank you. Thanks.